everybody! I just finished reading Attica Rise of the Mamba by Ben Henson and I went straight away to make this review. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing the names right, so I apologize in advance. Before I begin though, I need to make clear that there are some spoilers coming because I cannot honestly express my opinion if I don't talk about specific scenes, characters, you know, okay, so I'm really sorry about that if I spoil this for anyone. The book involves history, suspense, fantasy, and world cultures. It takes you to different countries as the protagonists travel to assassinate innocent people. Okay, so to begin with, the story is about the creation of the Mamba Brotherhood. A mamba is actually a word for the snake mamba, and snakes fascinate me, so we're at a good start. The Brotherhood was founded under difficult circumstances with good intentions to unite the African people, but ended up being money-driven and would do anything in exchange for good cash. So we're at this point where Etika, the protagonist and member of the Mamba Brotherhood, questions everything he's known, the motives of the Brotherhood and the morality of their actions. So in this video I'll talk about everything I liked and didn't like about this book because this is an honest review. So let me start with what I didn't like, I have my notes right here, and then I'll finish on a good note and mention what I did like about the story. Without further ado, here's my honest opinion. So the book is written in English and in dialogues, however, that the language is different than English, they are written in that language. Like when people are talking in French, the dialogue is actually in French. French, and then there's a footnote with the translation. That was very intriguing and I fell in love with that part, but at some point there was a dialogue in Portuguese with no translation at all. Maybe it was self-explanatory, but it wasn't for me. And even though I understood what the people said because I speak Spanish, I still have to google this one phrase because muito prazer, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right, <laughs> Um, in Spanish, it's Encantado de Conocerte, and I would have never guessed in this context that, it's, that it actually means nice to meet you when the other guy replies, my English is not good. Maybe it's just me. Maybe you could understand it. I don't know. And I'm not sure if that's an error in my copy or if it's generally missing the translation in the actual book. I read it in digital format, so I don't know if that's the case here. But I had to point it out, even though it's like a minor fault in the narration. I had to stop reading the story to Google what that means. Moving on to Ola Del also known as Oluko. In his first appearance, I felt like I was being introduced to a robot. The dialogues felt forced and unrealistic. However, that changed and it became better and Oluko actually turned out to be one of my favorite characters in the book. So at the end of the book, there's something that bothered me. When Oluko met Eteka, he revealed the truth about his parents and Eteka just believed him. There is this question in the discussion section. If you were in Eteka's shoes, would you have believed Oluko? Why or why not? My answer is no, clearly not. I would not have believed him. I mean, I would have surely questioned everything I've known. I would have seek the truth, but I would not have just deleted my entire life because some stranger told me that what I know is not true. But even though I didn't like the fact that Etika just believed him, uh, I feel that it's very appropriate. <laughs> It kind of makes sense in this context. I mean, like, Etika gives me the impression that he's at this, at this point, he would believe anything anyone told him. Besides believing everything Oluka said, he also believed the White Witch. And I know they had proof for what they said. I would question them a little more than Etika did. And let's not forget that Etika fell in love with a stranger. Like, that's also one of the reasons why I believe that Etika would really believe anything anyone told him. Which brings me to my next point. I'm not quite fond of quick love. 
and I don't really enjoy romance. I do occasionally enjoy a good love story, but that's it. That said, let's take a look at the relationship between Etika and Arewa. I believe that there was a nice build-up between Arewa and Etika, and I could find potential in their relationship. They turned out to have a somewhat healthy relationship, in this world where killing innocent people and having sex with prostitutes was the norm. I really enjoyed this relaxing moment in the plot and the young couple had the chance to figure out what they... whatever they had. But let's not forget that they had only been like in a couple of dates before Etika asked her to run away with him in another country because they were in danger. So Arewa replies, Dude, I barely know you, I'm not gonna follow you anywhere you go, which is a pretty decent response. I mean, like, everyone would have said that to someone you've only been on two dates with. But then, like, half an hour later, Arawa is bleeding to death in his arms and because and she wants to say something but because her mouth is full of blood she uses her finger to spell some words on the dusty floor she writes save my brother where I was like oh I love you I really wish she hadn't said that, it kind of ruined the intensity of the moment and the importance of her death and I went from sad to cringe. Oh... Okay, enough with what I didn't like, let's move on to what I did like because the parts I didn't like were like four sins in the entire book but the whole book is something I adored. I really enjoyed reading Etika Rise of the Mamba right from the very beginning. It grabs you straight from the first chapter. All the scenes are intense, the action, the fighting scenes, they're so vivid and Ben Henson's writing is amazing and it was perfect for this story. It, the story, the whole story was very nicely written. I am very sensitive when it comes to violence, abuse and rape and I was in great shock after reading this um, chapter where one person was brutally raped and murdered and I had nightmares. Oh, oh my god, my hair is up. Can you see it? Oh, gee. That's something I loved and hated at the same time, if that makes any sense. I really respect the effort Ben Henson put into writing this book and all the research he did, because trying to make a book historically accurate is really difficult and quite impressive. And he even mentions some actual real-life historical figures in the story, like Richard Wright, who meets Oluko in the Bandu Conference. I really like the fact that the plot involved two different time periods, like one that took place in 1990 and the other one in 1967 when the Brotherhood was created. It went back and forth with each chapter leaving cliffhangers all over the place. I really enjoy the three-dimensional characters, which is something you don't always see in books. For some reason it's missing. Henson's characters had each a personality of their own and the protagonists all had both a good and a bad side in them. For instance, I mentioned Oluko, turned out to be one of my favorite characters. He also had this gray area. On the one hand, he fought for knowledge and leadership and on the other, he was sleeping with his best friend's wife. And of course I love the presentation of the different world cultures, the different languages in the dialogues and the sketches of the characters, which I did not expect at all. So before I finish this video, I have to say that before reading a book, generally I always look at reviews and so I did the same thing with this one. And I came upon this review where this person was talking about how the book would make a great comic book and I agree! I enjoy a good comic book and I would love to see Etika 
as one. The book left me with unanswered questions and I don't know how to feel about it. I know this is the first book of a series, but damn, now I have to wait for the new book to come out. There is no closure and it kind of upsets me, but also intrigues me and I can't wait for the new book. Like, okay, I gave this book five stars. I think I should have begun with that phrase. Okay, that's it. Etika Rise of the Imamba by Ben Henson. See you guys.